Now, Russia's willingness to deploy nuclear weapons in a potential war with NATO is said to be increasing as Vladimir Putin believes that the United States and its allies would not dare to retaliate. And this is according to reports produced by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, which warns that the US would be unwilling to cross the nuclear threshold and may terminate the conflict early. They state that the Russian perception of the lack of credible Western will to use nuclear weapons or to accept casualties in conflict further reinforces Russia's aggressive nuclear thoughts and doctrine it included. Well, I can now speak with former British Army officer and the former commanding officer of the UK's Joint Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Regiment, Hamish de Breton Gordon. Welcome to the show, Hamish. Wow, what a fantastic CV you've got. The big question is, do they have a point? There seems to be a feeling that the West is sitting back. It's, it's, in, a, it's in a war, a land far away, and particularly Joe Biden has been criticised as not having the teeth to respond if Russia were to go nuclear first? Well, I think it's the first thing that the Russians always dive to when they're, you know, performing badly. Uh, and that is what's happening. I mean, today is, is a very symbolic day in the nuclear calendar. The uh, doomsday clock has just been reset. The doomsday clock was initiated in 1947 when uh, nuclear weapons first appeared. And at 90 seconds to midnight, those experts who set it believe that we're in the greatest threat of nuclear war ever, including the Cold War. But um, I think we need to put this into perspective. From the very get-go of, of Putin's Ill illegal invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February 2022, he threatened to use nuclear weapons mm. um, on the hope that NATO would stay out of the conflict and he could roll through Ukraine in two weeks. Now, that didn't happen. And each time he threatens nuclear weapons, actually, NATO and the US give more and more weapons and ammunition uh, to Ukraine. I think it's a show of desperation from the Russians at the moment. But um, it is also the, the West's approach to nuclear weapons is what we call strategic ambiguity. We never mm -hmm. say exactly what we're going to do. And really, that's what, what Putin is trying to use for leverage. But um, you know, I think a tactical nuclear weapon uh, used by Russia to stave off defeat in Ukraine, it might not elicit a nuclear response from the UK and the US, but an overwhelming conventional response within SHU, I'm sure. And Hamish, just to be clear, this is non-strategic nuclear bombs. It's not Hiroshima or Nagasaki. It's not flattening entire countries or cities. It's, it's smaller localised bombs with the, with the inkling that America wouldn't respond in kind. And what a Kremlin official said here, that America wouldn't be prepared to sacrifice, say, Boston for, say, Poznan. So they wouldn't get an international response to a localised first attack. What's your take on that? Well, again, I think this is semantics coming out of Russia. We, we call it a battlefield nuclear weapon. I mean, these nuclear weapons that the Russians are talking about still have the yield of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So they are massive explosions. They are not the intercontinental ballistic missiles that would take out a city like you know, Leeds or Birmingham of that sort of size. So sure, no, one wouldn't expect the Russians to fire a strategic uh, nuclear weapon in response to a battlefield uh, weapon being used. But um, uh, it is no secret that uh, US tactical nuclear weapons are coming back to the UK. So it is possible that the Russians could fire, uh, rather the Ukraine, the Americans could fire a tactical nuclear weapon in response. But I, I think what they would do, and I'm sure what the UK and NATO would support would be an overwhelming conventional response, which would have the same impact. So I think this is more hot air coming out of Moscow, really showing that things are getting desperate. They're running out of ideas. But um, people, although this is an auspicious day in the nuclear calendar, I don't think people should be overly concerned that we're uh, about to step into a nuclear conflict with Russia. Yeah, you've just answered my next question for me there, because, Hamish, because I don't want people to be absolutely petrified to live their lives. There is a lot of bluster coming out of the Kremlin, and nuclear arsenal is the ultimate piece of bluster. But do you think this is actually likely? Well, 
I think what, what has been illustrated by the doomsday clock now at 90 seconds to midnight is that there is an awful lot of uh, really nasty things happening in the world at the moment. And Iran, that's the center of most of it, now has weapons grade uranium, though that would enable it to make nuclear weapons. We know North Korea is very close to being able to produce nuclear weapons. So when you put all that together, the turmoil in the Middle East, you put together Putin, who's desperate to hang on to power. And also, let's not forget, he has a sham election coming up, and he's trying to show what a, what a strong, powerful leader he is. So okay. I think it is absolutely key that our leaders in this country, in the States and NATO, are absolutely on their balls of the feet and realize that this is the most important thing they must get right, despite all the other things vexing us at the moment. Okay, thank you for that expert analysis. Hamish de Breton-Gordon.